Good morning, friends. It is Saturday. It's day 115 in Russia's invasion into Ukraine. And we're so grateful you're here. This is our first day fully on the new page, Ukraine prayer update. So your shares, your comments, your likes are so important to help us get the word out uh, as we move to this new page. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, man, God is on the move. I can't say enough of how absolutely earth shattering the meetings on Thursday were in Kyiv with uh, German Chancellor uh, Olaf Scholz and uh, the uh, Prime Minister Mario Draghi of Italy and President Emmanuel Macron in France, of France. This is incredible. They came obviously with an agenda to uh, attempt to undermine uh, Ukraine's ability to fight to a victory uh, over Russia and to try to force a ceasefire and instead they were outplayed they were put they were pushed into a corner both with the demonstration of the atrocities in Irpin and the presence of Romanian uh, President uh, Ioannis and also by the actions of the US and UK to stand with um, and then also Zelensky's ironclad decision to give no ground but still even so it's shocking. Uh, Russia extended, expended so much effort to intimidate, both with gas and publicity, and yet they still d were not able to force Zelensky, and in the end, caved. And uh, and so, praise God. Now we are praying now that the weapons that are needed will come, because again, only about ten percent of the weapons needed by Ukraine to defeat the Russians, to push Russia out of Ukrainian territory have been delivered. We're still waiting. There's a need for a thousand howitzers, a thousand drones, 500 tanks. Um, you know, there's so much more needed. And so pray, pray, pray that the West will arise and provide those weapons. But there's so much also to celebrate. Man, one of the amazing things is Russia is using more and more just of the of the of oldest equipment, but still they are hoping that some of their most cutting edge weaponry might be able to skirt the Western weapons that Ukraine has provided. But the evidence is absolutely not. Even so, the most um, modernized tanks, the T-90As, which go by the name of Vladimir, sound like anybody you know, two of them were destroyed uh, in the Azum area. Why, why is that important? Because <clears throat> they have laser-guided systems that are meant to allow them to take out Stinger and Javelin, uh, take out Javelin missiles and keep from being taken out by the Western weapons, but they were totally destroyed. This means that any Russian tank is a sitting duck. Now in Javelins, the, the, what the, there is supposedly 10 to 1, 10 Javelins or, or similar uh, man pads um, in Ukraine for every Russian tank. So on the tank front, on the Javelin front, they're doing great, praise God. <clears throat> Another one in over in the Seven of Donetsk area, they were able to take out an MI-35 helicopter. Now again, this is the same deal. It's a super modernized uh, helicopter, so much better than the uh, MI-25, and it comes with massive anti-stinger uh, capabilities. Didn't work. They still got taken out. The videos of that are are incredible. And so what this means is this this is not just it shows that they can take it out. This is a huge blow to morale because what <clears throat> Russia is struggling to do is to find anybody who's willing to get into these cans of metal that are being shot out of the sky and shot on the ground. Nobody, I mean, it, it, in the in normally, the people would want to be in those because that's the most protected place, but it's killing morale in the Russians. Um, <clears throat> In Donetsk, uh, a Suhoi 25 was shot down uh, with a man pad. And also, they were able to destroy an ammunition warehouse. Man, we've talked about this over the last three or four days. They've been so successful in targeting um, the uh, targeting uh, all of these uh, logistics uh, items, these, these ammunition warehouses, factories, and so on. This is huge because it's making a massive difference in the war. Again, as I mentioned before, as this is our first day fully on the new page, you sharing, you liking, making those shares public, 
it makes a huge difference. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on. All right. So moving on, the um, in uh, Berdyansk, there was a partial um, um, a partial blackout after explosions in the night. These are almost certainly partisan activity because uh, most of the uh, Ukrainian missile abilities can't reach that far. Again, we've said this throughout. Russians are discovering that Ukrainians, shock of shocks, don't want them there. Praise God. Let the Ukrainian people be emboldened. Let them not give ground. Let them not. We, we said yesterday how in, uh, in Militopol, when they were like trying to push people to take Russian passports, 15 people out of 70,000 were willing to take them. Praise God. Let it be that evident over and over again that they would find no collaborators, nobody willing to work with them. Uh, the final piece is of, of success is many of you guys remember there was a Ukrainian medic by the name of Yulia Payevska who was um, in Mariupol and she sm managed to smuggle out video footage in the final days in Azovstal and she um, she was captured. She's been released. So we're praying that she's the first fruits of so many of those Azovstal defenders who are going to be able to get out. Um, so praise God for that. But as we always say, one of the key parts is in this entire war is truth because Putin has constantly used misinformation as the means to, to break through, to get, uh, to get out the word. I mean, to confuse the, the West, to, to uh, create, uh, uh, you know, kill morale, whatever it is. And instead, the truth comes through, and it's huge. The UK has, has made this public statement. Russia has already strategically lost the war in Ukraine and is a more diminished power on the world stage as a result of the invasion. Wow, that's huge. He said, he said that the Russian president has used up 25% of his army, used it up, but has achieved only tiny gains. This is a dreadful mistake by Russia. This is Admiral Sir Tony uh, Radikin. And he said that, that Russia will never take control of Ukraine. Russia has strategically lost already. It's very important that this continues to be pushed forward because again and again, you see certain elements, whether German intelligence, they put forth a narrative that fundamentally denies the facts of what's going on. And so it's very important in this disinformation war that the truth comes out. Uh, China, we, we've talked about this over and again. They want to ride both horses. They want to try to keep themselves open. Well, China, uh, China's president, Xi Jinping, has come out and made a declaration. He was at a video at the St. Petersburg uh, Economic Forum, and he declared that they expect in the coming months to set records for trade with Russia. What does that mean? I don't know, because up to this point, Chinese um, uh, companies have been terrified to do business with Russia. So unless China begins to put the screws to those companies, because those companies will then get secondary sanctions, or unless China has created some backdoor ways to provide, created uh, ghost companies that don't have any uh, um, uh, participation on the global scale, they're just simply companies to do business with Russia, I don't know. But again, it's put forward that China is going to try to support Russia. We'll pray again that the West doubles down and and chooses and uh, chooses to sanction them at all cost if they so do so. Um, you know, uh, Russia also. Now, here's this crazy thing. Now, this to me really shows the the fact that Putin lost on Thursday. He lost uh, three key allies in, in Mario Draghi, in Olaf Scholz, and uh, Emmanuel Macron. Because listen to his statement he made. He said that Moscow has nothing against Ukraine's possible membership of the European Union. He said on Friday that it's their sovereign decision to join economic unions or not. It's their business, the business of the Ukrainian people. Their sovereign decision. What he has said, they don't have any sovereignty, that Ukraine's not a country. Up to this point, he's declared Ukraine is nothing. Why is he doing this? Honestly, it looks like he's trying to not set himself at odds with what uh, Schultz and Macron and Draghi have done. And to me, that is a huge step back because they've already stepped back in May. They stepped back from the narrative of denazification because they realized that the Russian people have no idea what the heck they're talking about because nobody does because it's totally made up. 
But so now, so so going on, so it's like, but now he's declaring that Ukraine has sovereignty? That's amazing. That's amazing. And that can truly, truly shift. To me, that's a demonstration of what a massive breakthrough that we prayed for and that happened on Thursday and Friday. Um, also, um, you know, the um, we've continued to cover this, that the Russian military has lost their top brass over and over again. They're absolute glut. They now have repla replaced the head of the airborne uh, forces for the second time since the war began, uh, and they and Colonel General Andrei uh, Serdukov was dismissed due to massive losses. So this is the second time. The number of generals who've been sacked and the number of generals who were dead is is almost twice as many as generals started the war. It's it's unbelievable. This amount, this loss of veteran brass is something that cannot be recouped. It cannot be replaced. And uh, the way the, and, and this was the declaration by some uh, experts. They said, um, continued dismissals and possible internal purges of senior Russian officers will likely further degrade poor Russian command and control capabilities and the confidence of Russian officers. Praise God. And the final piece of truth that's huge is the BBC has done a big piece um, with an investigative journalist who have been looking at the atrocities done in filtration camp, and they're publicizing this. I don't want to go into it. It's some pretty dark stuff. But let me just say this. I've said it again and again. The West has to keep in mind this understanding that if Russia is occupying territory, atrocities are happening. There's no way that if we allow Russia to continue to possess territory in Ukraine, People are going to suffer, people are going to die, people are going to be abused, and people are going to be raped. Period. End of discussion. People are going to be deported. Pe families are going to be separated. Children are going to be made orphans. That's what happens when the Russian army possesses territory. This has to stay in. So when the BBC pushes this, that's amazingly helpful. Praise God. All right. Come on. There's been some great moves in support in the last 24 hours. Lithuania has declared that they are going to enforce the European sanctions on all transport to Kaliningrad. Why is that important? So Kaliningrad is the westernmost portion of Russia. It's a little enclave um, uh, just uh, between Lithuania and Belarus. It has uh, nuclear weapon capability. It is a massive military uh, bastion of Russia to threaten Europe, uh, but it's completely not connected to Russia. And so with Lithuania saying, we're, we're not going to allow Russia to continue to support Kaliningrad, that's a very, very brave move because Russia has continued to try to bully Lithuania throughout this. And for them to, sit, to, to make this bold declaration is is huge. Um, another piece is uh, uh, Boris Johnson, the UK Prime Minister, has, has said uh, it is important for the UK to show that it stands steadfastly with Ukraine amid what he described as Ukraine fatigue. That's helpful. That's helpful to just recognize people are tired, but they got to stand. The Russians are grinding. This is what he said, are grinding forward inch by inch. And it is vital for us to show that we know what we know to be true, which is that Ukraine can win and will win. Wow, that's awesome. Again, Boris Johnson was in Kyiv yesterday on the backside of all, um, Schultz and Macron and Draghi and Giannis. And what it demonstrated was what real friendship and support looks like because it was a totally different kind of meeting between him and Zelensky and Zelensky and those guys and the other guys. Awesome. One other thing, Canada has given a seven hundred and a $33 million loan to Ukraine uh, to be directed to the state budget and finance uh, priority expenditures. Again, uh, all the military help is helpful, but there's a lot of other things that have to be done in, in Ukraine. And so it's super helpful that Ukraine's gotten behind them in this way. Whew. So lots of good, lots of good. Again, I can't say it enough. What happened on Thursday, we, it, it, it's going to be downplayed in the media, but it is absolutely was life and death for Ukraine. So praise God. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being part of that. And again, as we move to this new page, I can't say it enough. As you share these, you make your shares public, you get the word out. It's super, super helpful that we don't lose the uh, momentum that we've gained on our old page. And so we're grateful to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, but again, we need to be praying for Severodonetsk. What's happening right now is Putin is going all in on Severodonetsk and Luchansk. Um, as the last pieces of Lugansk and as the gateway to take uh, large swaths of territory of Donetsk. And why why he's going all in? You would thought he's already gone all in. No, he is continuing to cannibalize troops from around Kharkov, dragging uh, troops from Kharkov down to Donetsk. I mean, down to, to 40 kilometers to the east of uh, Severna Donetsk. They're gathering troops and armored personnel carriers and, and tanks. And also they're shipping them up from down towards Donetsk, they're gathering for another attempt. Now, granted, they're cobbling this together with the leftovers and the and 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 so I can't imagine it being massively effective. But it will result in massive loss of life, at least for the Russians. What are we praying for? We're praying for bloodless resolution. We're praying for the Russians as well. And so pray that logistics would fundamentally break down. They wouldn't be able to pull off whatever they're attempting to move on Seven Adenets with. Um, they are uh, that they're um, as as Ukraine has moved more and more of uh, has moved an S-300 uh, system of anti-aircraft uh, system into the Shansk area. It's obvious that a lot of the, the aerial bombing has lessened, but um, the artillery is still going full bore. And so we need to see weapons from the West coming into Severodonetsk, real, real, you know, getting those M777s, getting some Caesars, getting GBM uh, 2000 into the area so that they can absolutely take out uh, that those artillery because um, as long as they're bombing again they're not going to be able to fight the Ukrainians in the streets they're trying to but they're just literally uh, they're losing they they tried so many ways to move forward yesterday in Severna Donetsk on the ground everywhere the Russians tried they failed okay so they're not they've got to just bomb them out of existence so pray Again, for logistics to break down and for the logistics of the West to get to Severna Donetsk. Um, um, on the, uh, in Kharkov, uh, either in order to distract from the fact that they're moving troops away from Kharkov, um, there have been a massive increase, uh, or, or as retribution for the West standing with Ukraine on Thursday and Friday, um, there have been massive increase in missile attacks on meaningless non-strategic civilian targets in Kharkov. The use of these missiles that are extremely expensive to no end is just a bully move to attempt to abuse as the Ukrainians are attempting to rebuild Kharkov. It, the, the bravery of the Ukrainians moving back into Kharkov even as the bombs continue to fall, it's just, it's stunning. It's really stunning. Um, also in Izum and Slavyansk, um, simultaneously, the Russians have made indications they are, they're still, the amount of, of, of just casualties as they continue to take the same, tried to take the same villages over and over again for weeks on end, it's ridiculous. But so the Russians are showing signs that they are going to attempt another massive offensive from Izum towards Slavyansk. And uh, again, to create this massive encirclement and uh, uh, cutting off the northern portion of Donetsk and, and Slavia and uh, and Severna Donetsk and Lyschansk. And so <laughs> at the same time, though, the Ukrainians are preparing for a massive counteroffensive. Pray that this counteroffensive is effective. Pray also, again, we've been the Hark from Kharkov. They've been threatening that that logistics uh, a pipeline that floods goes straight down from Kupiansk to Izum. Pray they're able to cut that off. Pray, pray, pray. This is this is a crucial time. Again, uh, Russia doesn't have the means, but they're trying everything they can to make it happen. Um, finally, pray for the church. Pray for the church. The church is arising. Pray for the church to be emboldened. Pray for the churches that have sat quiet to rise up in courage. The churches that have sat on their hands to begin to serve. To, for those who've been holding back to, to go to the front, to be able to serve the least of these, whether it's the refugees or the people in the gray areas in between the troops. I mean, people are living in the middle of this uh, and, and or for the people in occupied territories. And again, as always, we're so grateful to you all because we've been able to partner with our friends Vladimir and Lilia and the Church Blagaviest in Nipra, the Church Good News, and their team of 60, 70 people who are daily, in and daily, day in and day out, serving 
thousands of people, fam, uh, 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 hundreds and hundreds of families in Nipra, but also going out to all these cities in towns in the gray areas that are in the bombs, but even into the occupied territories. Pray for them. Pray for them. They're beginning when the strategy they're moving towards now is as they give food, they're organizing churches so the people can a receive the gospel, but b minister one to another when they're not, when the teams are not there. That they can be no longer victims, but they themselves can bring the kingdom of heaven on earth. They can bring breakthrough for people in with trauma and PTSD. They can he pray for people. They can have wisdom from on high of where to go and when to go. That they can truly bring life into this zone of death. Pray also though that as they're going in, they're trying to get in, they've gone into Herson, they're praying for opportunities to get into Militopol and get into um, Mariupol. Pray for them that they would be able to do that. And thank you for your gifts. We've been able to send well over $170,000 thanks to you all. And so if you want to be a part of that, go to ariselife.org slash help Ukraine. Find out more about it, what's going on, and there's a green button to give. But also, if you want more of the information, again, as always, we only go into a few uh, of, of the items that are listed. Go to ariselife.org slash Ukraine, and you can find the print form of these. And uh, But again and again, thank you, thank you, thank you. As we moved over to this new page, you sharing it, you commenting, it's making a difference. And when you make those shares public, thank you. Um, but let me pray for you. Because you matter, you matter, and you're part of the you're part of the battle. You're part of the army, and so Lord, I ask right now that you would encourage hearts. I feel like there's many who are fatigued, there are many who are tired, there are many who are despairing or in depression, or they're just so crushed by the war and the pain that they see. Lord, strengthen and encourage the hearts, lift up the the fainting, and Lord, you said that those who wait upon you will renew their strength. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint but rather they'll mount up with wings like eagles. And I pray right now that that courage and joy would flood into hearts. They would know that they matter. They would know that they're seen and they would know your love in a whole new way. Your beautiful name, amen. We love you guys. Um, if you need prayer, say you need prayer. Jump on there, you know, guys, pray for one another. Our team would love to pray for you. But also, if you'd like to be part of one of our Zoom mentor groups, you can go to, uh, say, men's group or women's group, and our team would love to come to give you those details. But we love you guys, and we're grateful for you. And thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting us all every step of the way. We're grateful. Have an amazing day.